You right. were a non-believing Catholic most of your life. I believed and I knew all of the stories about the Bible, but I didn't know the author of the book. You ended up in prison. What for? For trafficking a small amount of LSD. And you met an interesting guy in prison. This light emanated from within him and he looked at me without opening his mouth and he spoke to me and he said, I told you, Joey, I told you. You do realize the glory of God has filled the room you're in, filled the room that I'm in, and probably is filling the room of those that are viewing. Is God showing you anything, Joel? What he's showing me is that this testimony is shared. I believe that as God's glory invades people's homes and it touches their body and fills their hearts, there's an awakening. Are you weeping right now? Why? Just I can sense the presence of God. I'm going to take you back to when your parents probably first realized you had prophetic dreams. You were prophetic. When was that? Yeah. Well, the first time I can remember it, I was probably 17 years old and I had been involved with the counterculture and the LSD culture and the psychedelic shamanism. I was in high school and I had gotten into a lot of trouble. And I was sleeping one night and I had a dream and in the dream, I saw a picture of a man and I remember all the details, his hair, I remember his mustache, he had a white shirt on, he had the tassels on his shoulders, he had the bars on his chest, and my mom knocked on my door and said, Joel, get up, there's somebody here that I want you to talk to. And so I got up and I went downstairs and it was a man from the Navy uh, that was there to try and enlist me. My <laughs> mother hoped that if I was enlisted in the military, I wouldn't go to the penitentiary, so. I, she knew you were headed to the penitentiary? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you ended up in prison, what for? I did, for trafficking a small amount of LSD. And yeah. you, you met a, an interesting guy in prison. Cedric, yes, I tell did. me, yeah. describe him to me and tell me about that encounter. But but you're Catholic. Now, um, yeah. now I have met Catholics that are as born again as I am, and I've yeah. met Catholics that are as far away as a non-believer. Uh, you right. were a non-believing Catholic most of your life. I believed, and I knew all of the stories about the Bible, but I didn't know the author of the book at that time in my life. I didn't actually know Christ. So oh, Okay, so you're in prison. You, you, yeah. Your mother's worst nightmare became real. Uh, and right. you meet Cedric. Tell me yeah. about Cedric. So I was in prison. I was sentenced 3 to 15 years for trafficking LSD. And uh, I was part of the Grateful Dead family and the counterculture. And that's what ended me up there. We actually believed that hallucinogenic drugs uh, would give us access to this awakening and this spiritual realm. And so I got wrapped up in that, got in trouble, ended up in the penitentiary. And on my 21st birthday, I'll never forget it. I had a situation with an interaction with one of the other convicts there. They used to call me Doogie Hauser. They would all come to me for answers and I would teach people to read and I would teach people mathematics and things like that. And, uh, and I went and we had a negative interaction and I left that interaction and I, I prayed for probably one of the first times in a real dialogue with God. And I looked up to heaven, I remember it vividly, I had my hands out and I said, Lord, I need you to send me somebody that I can relate to. I can't relate to any of these people. 
I was in a close maximum security prison. People were there for murder, armed well, robbery. Well, 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 yeah, you just did a little drugs. How did that happen? Yeah, well, at that time, LSD for a very small amount, and this was in the 90s, uh, carried a very large penalty. Hmm. So what I sold was enough LSD for one person to get high, and the minimum sentence was 3 to 15 years. Hmm. So that was my sentence. I follow. Uh, and so I was there, and I said that prayer. I cried out to God that day, and I remember weeping. It was very emotional, and I forgot about it. And a few days later, I go out onto the prison yard, and we had a large prison yard surrounded by razor wire, and I see this man. And he's dressed like a convict, and he has a soccer ball, and he's juggling the soccer ball. And I notice... Um, so I go over to him. I played soccer my whole life, was raised in a so soccer culture, and I started juggling with him. And he began to talk to me, and he had a strong Jamaican accent. Now, juggling is just passing back and forth the soccer ball. What is juggling? Well, tapping it up in the air, keeping okay. it up in the air. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so I jumped in with him, and, um, and, he, and he was Jamaican, had a strong accent. And I'm thinking, okay, this guy plays soccer. He's from Jamaica. I like Bob Marley. It, it was, that was the depth of it for me, you know? And um, we connected. And immediately, Cedric began to teach me the word and talk to me about Christ and talk to me about the Bible. And the defining moment, Sid, one night after being with him for about two weeks, we were, we were given access to walk around inside the prison. And we're walking in what I would call a bad neighborhood in the prison. Everything that you think of that goes on in prison was happening there. And I look over at Cedric and I feel something come over me. And tears start running down his face and his countenance changed. He became very serious. And he began to speak in a language that I didn't understand. And I'm thinking in my natural mind, like, I need to get out of here. What's happening to my friend here? And in prison, you have you have the Aryan Brotherhood. You have the Black Muslims, which are the African-American version of the Aryan Brotherhood. You have true Christians. You have uh, Aramaic Muslims. Well, this Aramaic Muslim from the Middle East, he had his beanie on. He would pray every day jumped up and started running back and forth as Cedric's speaking in these tongues. And he points at us and he says, oh dear, oh dear, I'll never forget this. Oh dear, he's speaking in Aramaic. Huh. He's speaking in Aramaic. He's saying God is walking among you in Aramaic. He's saying God is walking among you. And he comes around, falls on his knees in front of us, takes his beanie off, hands it to Cedric and says, I want to serve the God that you serve. Wow. And that was my introduction to the reality of the Holy Spirit. You're weeping right now. Why? Just I can sense the presence of God. Me too. As strongly on the situation as it, as it did 20 years ago when it happened. And uh, so that was the beginning of one event after another that took place with Cedric. And um, when it really culminated for me was we were together for probably about almost two months. He was only with me for two months. And everyone was going to the parole board. There was about 100 men that would go every month and everyone was getting somewhere between 12 and 65 more months. Nobody was getting released. And my turn was coming up and I was basically had a moment. I was like, I'm doomed. I'm going to be here forever. And he rebuked me and he called me Joey. And he said, Joey, haven't I taught you anything yet? And he said, come out here. And he took me out onto the prison yard again. And he began to. I know now he was speaking into my future prophetically. 
He said, Joey, on this date, you're going to get out. This is what's going to happen in your life. You're going to preach the gospel. You're going to travel around. And as he's moving, Sid, this is where it gets really, really out there. His hands would move and he would speak and thunder would come into the clouds. And these dark clouds rolled in. And by the time the first strike of lightning hit as he spoke, I said, okay, whatever you say, I got to get out of here. And I got up and I took off and I just didn't bring it up again. And it was not many days later that I would, we would wake up in the morning to be counted. And then I would go to Cedric's bed and we would go to breakfast together. I go there and and he's gone, right? His, you know, there's no linens, his box is empty, everything. He he got released, he got released. Yeah, it it appeared as though he got released, Mm -hmm. right? And uh, so I went to the guards who I had rapport with. He didn't tell you the day before? He's your best no. friend. <laughs> no, didn't tell me anything. Yeah. And and the and the guards just blew me off and they would talk to me consistently about what was happening and who needed help and things like that. And so I went to some other people and we determined that he must have got deported. And um ooh. So I just chalked it up. So I go to the parole board like a month later. 105 men. And they released me. I was the only one out of 105 men. And immediately I was taken back to the yard as Cedric was talking to me and telling me that I was going to get out, that these things were going to happen. And I pondered those things. And when you get paroled, you have 60 days and then you're released. So I'm holding out. And about 30 days into it, I wake up one morning sitting in my bed, I'm thinking it's count time. And I look and everybody's asleep. And I looked back and I was asleep in my bed. And I looked at my hands and I was in this body of light. The best way I can describe it is it was like opalescent. It was iridescent so you could see through me, but it was like every color was involved in it, like an opal. You do realize the glory of God has filled the room you're in, filled the room that I'm in, and probably is filling the room of those that are viewing. Praise God, I hope so. I hope so, because it's his glory. Oh, it is. It is. That that opens our eyes to see, right? And Cedric standing at the end of my bed. But he's much taller. He's made of brilliant light. And and Sid, he even had a Bible in his hand that was made out of the same light. Wait, 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 wait. you said he was released. He wasn't in prison anymore. How could he be at your bed? That's that's a good question, Sid. (laughs) That's exactly what I was thinking. But he was in this heavenly body. He was probably about seven feet tall. And this light emanated from within him. And he looked at me without opening his mouth. And he spoke to me. And he said, I told you, Joey. I told you. And at that point, he disappeared. And I sat up in my bed, overwhelmed with the presence of, now I know it's the presence of the Lord. Uh, Was this really happening or was this a dream, Joey? Now, this was not a dream. This was, I was sitting up in my bed. It was as if I was out of my body in a spiritual body and Cedric was standing at the foot of my bed. And the moment that I thought to myself, I need to wake up, I sat up in my bed and I was there and everyone was sleeping around me. So the question is, I have a lot of questions, but go ahead. (laughs) The question that I've asked my leaders and the people who have discipled me in more recent years is who was Cedric? A lot of people would say, well, it was Jesus, or I believe it was an angel. I believe Cedric was an angel that God sent as a response to my prayer to bring me 
into the kingdom of heaven? You can't answer this question, but is when you share this, the same presence you must have felt is yeah. emanating all over the place. Yeah. Does this yeah, happen every, every time you share it? Most of the time, yes, uh, because I only share it in what I would call divinely inspired moments. Um, it's not something I've, it's something I've actually held on to for many years. And my, my spiritual father and my mentor, he's the senior pastor of Bethel Cleveland, his name's Steve Witt. He came to me recently in probably the last six months and he says, you know, Joel, you have to start sharing your story. You do. And uh, yeah. Because in my opinion, every time you share this, Joel, the same thing is going to happen. Like, for instance, yeah. this morning in my private prayer time, I heard that people that have problems in their wrist are going to be healed today. And Amen. I believe there are people viewing us right now that have problems in their wrist, whatever yeah. it is, just start moving it. You'll see you're healed. And as Amen. I said, wrist, I'm telling you, there are people that have pain in their back and their neck and their hip uh, yeah. and even their fingers. And if you will move it by faith, I know you will be healed. I don't hope it. I know you will be Amen. healed. Is God showing you anything, Joel? What he's showing me is that this testimony is shared. We're speaking life. Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. And the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I believe that as God's glory invades people's homes and it touches their body and fills their hearts, there's an awakening that's happening inside of them. And their perception of what is unseen is going to start to become seen in your life. You're going to notice things that you didn't notice before. When you lay down to sleep, this I hear it right now, Sid, I hear it clearly. Well, some of you cannot sleep and you're having nightmares every night. And rather than have nightmares as you yield to the presence of God, when you sleep, you are going to rest like you haven't rest for years. But not only that, you will have dreams and you will have visions of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus will visit you in the night watches. And I believe that with all of my heart, with all of my spirit. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm reminded of a prophetic word I had many years ago. Sid, when your head hits the pillow, you fall asleep and you're yeah. not going to wake up until it's time for you to wake up. Yeah. And I believe that that word right now that I heard many, many years ago is for someone right now because I tell you the glory that is emanating out of Joel right now, plus that word, it is finished. It is done. It is done. In Jesus' name. Yeah, we speak peace over you. We speak the rest of the Lord over you. Jesus is called the Prince of Peace because with him comes an enveloping peace. And as he meets you in those night watches, his shalom, his peace will rest upon your soul. Now, Jesus. what is this business you told me about people and buildings? And this has happened recently. Tell me about that. Yeah, about two years ago. I would be doing normal day-to-day -day activities, you know, in, in between, not preaching, not during my prayer time, but doing the dishes or pulling something out of the refrigerator, driving somewhere. The Holy Spirit will overtake me. And there's two key things that happen. One is I'll have an open vision. And it's almost as if I'm communicating and speaking to, I'll say it, the cloud of witnesses. The first time it happened to me, what, is that, what does that mean first? 
it's almost as if I can see the people who have gone before us in the spirit. The Bible calls them the cloud of witnesses. Jesus went up the mount and Moses and Elijah appeared to him in glory. And it's not something I'm looking for, but in those encounters and experiences, it's as if the Lord by his spirit and by his sovereignty will begin to show me what to say to specific people, how to pray for specific people and how to hear what the spirit is saying through them as well. The other part of it is the Lord has been speaking to me about different ministers in different places around the country, about buildings. Three times specifically, I saw cinder blocks and concrete, and I saw those leaders building in their buildings. Now, these are detailed words. And just for the sake of anonymity, it doesn't really matter who they are. But I'll call them on the phone and I'll say, this is what the Lord's sharing with me and showing with me. One of them contacted me. I sent it by text. And he said, Joel, I'm sitting here at my computer crafting a letter to someone who's very significant in the history of our church. And all of the letter is about us stepping into buying a new property to build a new building on. And he said, Joel, this is the most significant prophetic word we've received in the history of our church. And I, you know, when people tell me that I just, you know, I, I weep because I know that the Lord's heart is for them to step into that. And, uh, he, in his sovereignty, just chose to take this guy who was incarcerated for drugs and practicing to be a warlock, and he redeemed my life, and he chose to make me a vessel and to speak through me for the benefit of other people, and uh, that's humbling. Joel, there are people viewing us right now that are exactly where you were. You knew yeah. the Bible stories. You knew about religion, but you never had your own experiential knowledge with him. Yeah, that's I, right. I'm, I'm gonna lead them in a prayer. Would you repeat the words after me? And you repeat the words as Joel says them. You that are yeah. viewing, everyone. This is for you to have your own experiential knowledge with God mm. so that you can do greater things than you hear my guests do, so that you can be involved in the greatest and I believe the last great move of God's Spirit. Now, this this could last a long time, but my Bible says no one knows the day or the hour, So, but yeah, it so could last a long time. I don't know how long, because I don't know when the Messiah is returning. I just know I'm ready, and I want you to be ready. Repeat this <laughs> prayer out loud with me. Dear God. Dear God. I've made many mistakes in my life. I've made many mistakes in my life. And I'm so sorry. And I'm so sorry. Because of the blood of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus. All of my mistakes are washed away. All of my mistakes are washed away. And in God's sight. And in God's sight. I am clean. I am clean. And now that I'm clean. Now that I'm clean. Jesus, come and live inside of me. Jesus, come and live inside of me. I make you my Messiah. I make you my Messiah. And I make you my Lord. And I make you my Lord. Amen. Amen. Do you ever pray for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit, Joel? I was just going to say that, Sid. I sense the Holy Ghost. Your on turn. This. Lead us. Uh, so I'm going to pray that the power of the Holy Spirit come into your life. Because this is a key thing, guys. If without the Holy Spirit, we can't understand the Bible. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't live according to the Bible. 
And just very quickly, when I was coming out of prison, I fell, Sid. I fell. I didn't have discipleship. I ended up addicted to heroin, all kinds of stuff. But in January of 2004, I re-surrendered my life to Christ. And in a moment, it was like lightning hit me from the sky. And it struck me. And I began to speak in a language I didn't understand. And that was remarkable. But what was more remarkable was this light that lit up inside of me. And when this light began to shine in my heart, it was like the heart of stone was replaced with the heart of flesh. And I began to see because when the light comes on, that's what happens. We see. Uh, uh, help, so I'm going to pray. Help, excuse me. Help me out a little bit. Yeah. Can you make it a little more graphic? A light came on within me. Can you describe it any stronger? Absolutely. So when this lightning struck me, I felt this power coursing through my body. And I began to speak in a language and I could see it come out of my mouth like light. And I was embarrassed because there were people around when it was happening. And I fell down on my knees, covered my face, and this light lit up inside me. And I could feel it growing and it began to shine from within me out from me in all directions to the point where I couldn't see and I was enveloped in this light. And when that light surrounded me, the Lord began to speak to me. And it was at that point where I said, Lord, I've distributed LSD, other drugs, done all these things. I've worked for the devil. I said, if I could ever do as much for your kingdom as I did for the kingdom of darkness, here I am. And in that moment, I was set free from heroin addiction. I was set free from tobacco. I was set free from all kinds of things. Are you saying instantly or gradually yes. you were set free? Which instantly. One? For me, it was instantly. Yeah. Pray for us to be filled with the filled. Holy Spirit and speak in a new language. Tongues Amen. The Bible calls. Yeah, everybody. Put your hands out in front of you like this. People have been receiving this way for thousands of years in the kingdom. Holy Spirit, you're so welcome. We invite you to come right now to everyone watching that you would come like a holy fire, just like on the day of Pentecost when cloven tongues of fire rested upon the disciples and they spoke in another language. I speak to you, be filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Some of you may experience trembling, intense heat surrounding your body. You might even be crying and weeping. Just yield to the Holy Spirit and just fill them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Let new tongues come to life in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Joel? Yes, sir. Those that watched, you may want to watch this a second time. I think yeah. you're going to be filled and filled and filled with the glorious glory of God. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen.